Come on, son. Get the fuck out of here. What's going on, everybody? Shout out the king, the one and only. Here today to bring you my review for Naruto Manga Chapter 605. I gotta say, I got mixed feelings on this chapter, people. I mean, it's it's. Now let me let me let me explain before we get into this review. This is this will be more of a discussion more than a review. I'm well, of course I'm gonna go over the synopsis of the chapter with you guys. I'm gonna give you my thoughts, but this was more of a battle chapter, and there wasn't much dialogue at all. So um, let's go through. We'll walk through step by step, and then I'll give you my thoughts on the chapter at the end. All right, so. The chapter starts off with Kakashi still, you know, just finishing Paling Ren with his Chidori. Uh, he pulls his arm out. You know, it is Ren, apparently. She falls to the ground. You know, she's bleeding. She's dying. It's, 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 it, well, she's dead. She got stabbed through the heart with a Chidori. And Kakashi and Obito's Mongeku Sharingan activates. Now, this action creates a huge fucking plot hole. A huge fucking plot hole. And this is where I have an issue with this fucking chapter. So, now we are to believe that Kakashi and Obito unlocked their Mongekyou Sharingans at the very same time. Now, here's the thing. Through the entire first part of Naruto, we all know that Kakashi has never used his Mangeku Sharingan at all. We, as far as we know, he did not use it until Naruto Shippuden. And I need to understand why. If even if even if Kakashi unwillingly unlocked his Mangeku Sharingan, how did he figure it? How did he figure that out at that point in time? You know, like, it just, like, that situation just unlocked a whole bunch of craziness that was unnecessary. Like, I understand what the writer and the writers for Naruto were trying to do. They're trying to explain the story of Obito. But I feel like in the process, you're, like, you're creating craziness at the same time. Like, again, I'm not, I'm not, I know, I know people's first reaction is, just wait for the story to, you know, unveil and you'll find out for sure. I'm just like, it just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because essentially what happens is Kakashi unlocks his Mangeku Sharingan. And of course, we all know the, the, the way that you unlock your Mangeku Sharingan is to basically kill your best friend or kill the person you hold closest to you. We saw that's how uh, um, um, Sasuke unlocked his is when he killed his brother. Um, Itachi. We saw Itachi got his by killing his friend Azuna. Um, I think that was his name. I may have gotten it wrong, but whatever. We we know that's how he gets it. And the big question was always to Kakashi: How did Kakashi unlock his Mangeku Sharingan? Because we all he we all know that the only way to unlock it is to kill the person closest to you, aka best friend, girlfriend, whatever the case may be. And we were like. Ren must have died later on after part one. That's the only way he could have done it. Now we see that she he actually got it before the start of the actual Naruto series. Now there, what Kubo is going to have to do, he's going to now have to make another chapter or flashback to show us how Kakashi realizes he has the Mangekyou Sharingan and how he unlocks it for himself. You see what I'm saying? You see the kind of plot devices that are now been created because of this, 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 this whole situation. But anyway, let let I'll get into that a little bit more. Let's continue on with the review. So, with a recap. So Kakashi passes out, and Obito goes into a blind rage. Now, my thing is this: I don't think this is Obito fighting right now. I think Obito's emotions are in it, but I think this is the Zetsu clone. That is feeding off of Obito's emotions and is doing majority of the fighting because the techniques that uh, he is using is just like ridiculous. Like these hidden myths of the ninja are being slaughtered by Obito. I mean, he's using wood style jutsu like I've never seen it used before. Like uh, 
Hashiyama sends you DNA is fucking ridiculous. Like, I, I guess we all know how OP that uh, sends you DNA is, but just seeing a Uchiha use that in combination with the Sharingan is just like unreal. Like, Obito is literally running through these guys. Just like this one huge ninja he comes up on, he just literally extends his arm and shishka bobs him with like 15 to 20 different tree branches. Basically just, you know, punctured him like he was just a pincushion. And the rest of the, the, the rest of the team is pretty much the same. They all come in from different attacks. He's using his Mongeku Sharingan and is phasing, all the attacks are phasing through him. And it's, it's just, it's, it's just like, basically it's more the same. It's just a whole chapter of him just slaughtering everybody in his path. Like he is going through a blind rage. And it looks like the uh, the the misfit ninja realize that they can't win, and they real they they say something to the effect of, "Grab the body, we can't let them have her," and they go to try to take Ren, and of course Obito's like, "You're not, that's not gonna fucking happen," so he's like attacking at full force, again killing everything in his sights, and when he basically comes to, literally there's like a tree that's like growing out of the ground. And almost like a funnel shape and it's literally blood and bodies everywhere like it's 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 just amazing like the artwork just the, the art style with this chapter I will give it high praise just to convey that kind of damage and that kind of brutality in a manga chapter using only black and white is just it's, it's amazing it's, it's, it's just amazing like it's it was just beautiful so um, Obito comes to our guest comes to his faculties and he says something along the lines of where am I? I must be in hell. And again, you know, he see him, you know, covered in his whole eye area is splattered in blood. I don't know if it's his blood or is it the blood of the enemies he had been killing. But uh, he literally raped every one of those ninja and then basically he's just, you know, sitting around Ren's body. We don't know what's going on and the chapter pretty much ends there. Uh, overall, out of a five, I'm going to probably give this chapter a three, a three and a half. Um, like I said, the, the animation style, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the chapter itself was solid. It's just that whole unawakening of the Mangeku Sharingan that just really got me. And again, I understand we're going to have to wait and find out exactly how he ties it all up. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just that when you create... Again, we've seen Kakashi through the first entire series of Naruto, and he's been through some crazy shit. And you're trying to tell me that at no point in time, out of frustration or out of fear for his own life, his Mangeku Sharingan doesn't activate? Like, it's, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Because even when Sasuke first got his Mangeku Sharingan, he didn't know how to fully control it. But when he, got, when he was getting that ass whooped by Killer B, and he got his whole fucking chest blown open... That fucking Mangeku Sharingan activated and saved his fucking ass. So, don't tell me that there was not any battle in the first part of Naruto that couldn't have awoken uh, Kakashi's Mangeku Sharingan. That's bullshit. But, um, I don't know. Maybe that, that's, that's, why, that's why I do these videos so we can discuss. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about Kakashi unlocking his Mangeku Sharingan, but not a being able to realize it exists until part two of uh, Naruto Shippuden. Uh, definitely let me know in the comment section below. Thumbs up the video if you could. And definitely subscribe, because again, I love bringing you guys fantastic content. And subscribing helps me do this a better job for you guys. Now, uh, show the king, the one and only. You guys have a fantastic day.